Hi everyone, Neil Wilcoxon here. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about how I moved away from the Nexus 5 over to the LG G4. Um, basically what I'm going to be covering is what went wrong here with the Nexus 5, why the G4s serve me a little bit better, um, also some complaints about the G4 that um, I wish could be fixed, and also why I picked this over other phones in the market. But let's start out with the Nexus 5 and talk about kind of what went wrong here. Um, so the first thing is just physical wear over time. You probably can't see it, but on the back here there's uh, a lot of scratching and for the earliest um, batch of Nexuses, the letters here start to peel off to the point where I've lost all of them. And part of this is due, I went on a camping trip in really hot weather and I think that was a contributing factor. So I can't entirely knock this phone and I mean, it doesn't affect functionality, it just makes it look kind of like crap. Um, but that's just a physical thing, I'm not too worried about that. Display intact, I mean, I've never broken a display, uh, the front glass on any phone before, so that's not an issue here. Um, still works okay. Uh, I found the battery life to be pretty bad, and that's something where it actually comes down to me being on T-Mobile because uh, since I switched over to the G4, I've put a uh, one of those AT&T MVNO SIM cards in here, and the battery life has seemed to be way better. So I think the battery life issues that I was having actually had to do with uh, being on the T-Mobile network. So that kind of sucks, because this always had trouble maintaining signal to the point where I look in the battery life menu and it would tell me that I was without a signal for like 30 or 40% of the time and I could definitely see where that would contribute to the poor battery life. Uh, also, as usual, the camera still sucks on here. I've never expected much, and to be honest, the G4 camera, I wasn't terribly more impressed than I was with the Nexus 5 camera. People are saying, oh, you know, it's a great camera, but honestly, compared to an actual camera, it's still not there, I don't think. And that's partially due to what I want in a camera. I mean, I'm always going to have a real camera as far as I can see in the future. So wasn't a huge factor to me, but that's something else with it. Um, what else happened to the Nexus 5? Uh, I think that was pretty much it. I mean, I didn't like not having a removable battery. That pretty much killed me. So let's grab the G4 here. Um, and that's something that I liked as the replaceable battery. You can see here, this is a slightly different shape than uh, the regular G4s you'd see out there because I've put an extended battery in here. And with that comes a new back plate. This one is really crappy plastic, if you can hear that. Really cheap plastic. The G4 back that it comes with is really nice. You can pick from either the leather one or the plastic one. I went with plastic. I, I love that back. I wish that there was a way to get one for the extended battery. Unfortunately, this is what I've got right now. Um, I'm looking into things that I can do to make this more usable. Um, what's good about the G4? So G4 um, bought it directly from T-Mobile. It's called the Jump On Demand plan, I think is what it's called. Um, it's basically a phone lease and then at the end of the lease, you can put in the rest of the money to buy the phone. And that's probably what I'll end up doing, because if you just give the phone back, you've basically like lost all the money that you've put into it, whereas if I keep it, you know, I can have a nice backup for whatever my next phone is, and I would like to have that better, I think, because honestly, still having the Nexus, I like having it around as a second phone. Um, in case I ever need to use it. It just makes me a little more comfortable. Um, also, a big feature, which is why I had to pick a phone directly from T-Mobile, is the Wi-Fi calling. Um, first of all, the signal on the G4 is just better. Inside buildings where I can never get signal on the Nexus before, I can kind of squeeze out one bar. Um, but with that, the signal indicator on this just totally lies like it's programmed to display way more bars even when they don't exist and when you go into the actual settings and look at what the signal strength is 
it's really just in the programming of what the bars are displayed as because there's no standard. Um, so I've covered extended battery, better signal. Um, maybe let's talk about some things that I don't like. So I mentioned the camera. Camera's no better. Um, I've taken some photos on it. Um, still suffers from all the small sensor issues that you get with any camera really, even if it's an actual camera. If it has a small sensor, that's just a physical barrier that you can't overcome no matter how much software you layer on top of it. Apple and Samsung have been, you know, working on their individual software and LG maybe not quite as good. Um, shoots 4K video, haven't used it to be honest. Um, because there's a lot more than just the resolution. Um, let's look here, um, see if there's anything else. So something to mention, this is not stock Android at all. You can see when I pull down the top menu here, hopefully you can see, um, these are totally different toggle switches from uh, stock Android. And I've gotten used to it. I don't like it, but it's something that I've been living with. Another thing that's been kind of disappointing about this phone is the lack of a root community for getting root on it. I don't have the G4 rooted right now, and that's because the only root available for the US carrier versions is one where you basically flash a new system image. And of course that would either A, wipe out all my stuff, or B, create some serious problems. And I can't confidently say that the Wi-Fi calling would stay working. And that's the reason why I picked a T-Mobile specific phone is to get that. And I really don't want it to break. So now I kind of want to talk about why I'd pick the G4 over other phones that are available. I do want to say that I bought this phone back in August, so I hadn't seen the new Nexuses yet. But even after seeing them, I still feel like I would have had to go with the G4. And that's for a couple of reasons. One of them is the extended battery. Uh, which you just can't get anything like that when the battery's sealed in the phone. Um, even Samsung, who have long sort of had, you know, batteries you can swap out. And, you know, I've seen for like the Galaxy S3, they have like 9,000 milliamp hour batteries that stick way out of the back of the phone. Even Samsung has moved over to battery sealed in the unit. And that makes sense, you know, it lets you make the phone smaller, not having you know, the mechanism for a removal battery, all that extra shielding you need around it. Because uh, one of the reasons why the Nexus can be so thin, the battery, when I replaced it one time, it's super thin, and that's something you can't really let the user touch, because just trying to take the old battery out, I ended up bending it. Um, so obviously you can't have a really thin battery without much casing around it and let the user replace it, so I understand that but I'd rather sacrifice a little bit of thickness to be able to swap out batteries and add an extended battery and stuff like that. Um, another factor being the Wi-Fi calling. I just spend so much time inside that, you know, the T-Mobile signal was so lacking and going in and out of airplane mode and giving people a Google Voice number so that, you know, I could be reached at any time instead of just when I'm in between buildings um, the Wi-Fi calling was really a must, and you have to buy a phone from T-Mobile to get that. I wish they could just write an app, but there's some reason that they can't. Um, that's a little disappointing that that factor alone limited my phone choice so much. Something that I also considered was getting an iPhone, but when I realized that the model you really want to get, um, given that the first model is 16 gigabytes and then the price goes up from there because I can't quite live with 16 gigabytes. I lived with 32 on the Nexus and there's no expandable storage on the iPhone. That was a little rough. And then also all of my experience with Apple's mobile devices in the past, they've just been a little bit too limited for me. I really do like using Android and I wanted to give Windows Phone a chance too, but that never really went anywhere. So Android's been what I've stuck with. So that's why not an iPhone. And then as I said, all the other Android phones um, didn't have expandable storage, didn't have removable battery. And you know, this was all stuff that while a new phone would be good, 
even if I lack some of those features, it couldn't justify, you know, moving away from the Nexus unless I had all of them. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully uh, you guys will take my explanation for why I've moved away from the Nexus. Even though I said I was going to try to keep it for a little bit longer, um, I just um, was getting a little bored of it also, to be honest. I wanted to try something new. And I'm happy to have the G4. It is a pretty cool phone. It's got its downsides, but doesn't every phone, right? Um, I still use the Nexus from time to time. Uh, I've got a SIM card in there with prepaid service. And uh, that's that. So with that said, thank you guys for watching and stay tuned to my channel for more videos like this.